Hi, I'm Kelsey. I'm the blood bank coordinator here at Dove Lewis, and today I'm going to show you how to process um, fresh whole blood into packed red blood cells and fresh frozen plasma. We are going to spin this and then split the unit so that we have two separate um, products when we're done. So I'm going to start by putting it in our bucket for centrifugation. Um, we're going to make sure that our bags are all upright and they're kind of packed together. And you're just going to tuck that in there. And then I'm going to counterbalance that. So what we need to do is find out the weight of this. I put it on here and then I will zero it out once it's ready. And then I use, um, I use a bag of rice to counterbalance with um, because it's easier to get the correct weight. Uh, we want to be as close to matching as possible. So I'll put this on here. So you can see I'm under by about 150 grams. So I'm going to add some rice until we get closer to the zero mark. We want them to be even. OK, so now we're right at zero. Um, that means that this weighs exactly as much as this does, which is perfect for, for counterbalancing. And we're going to take it over to our centrifuge to spin. Uh, so just like all centrifuges, you want them to be opposite each other. So they are opposite each other and ready to go. We have a cover. And then we will spin dog blood. We spin at 4.2 reps per minute times 1,000 and for seven minutes. And our break is already set at 3.5. Um, the settings are specific to the centrifuge that you use. So just make sure that you're following the instructions for the centrifuge. So we're going to change that to 4.2. Put our timer for seven minutes, 3.5, and we're ready to go. Okay, so our sample is done spinning now. So what we can do is just gently pull our pieces up here and then gently pull the bags out. And then you should be able to see a pretty good separation of your red blood cells and your plasma, which we can here. These particular bags have little holes on it, um, specifically for the plasma extractor. So I'm just gonna poke those through. And then I have two accessory bags here. One of them is empty, and that's what our plasma is going to go into. And the other one has our additive um, already in here, which is great. It makes it so that our system stays closed. We don't have to add an additive through a port or anything like that. So we have Optizol ready to go. And what I like to do is get my bag of Optizol out of the way while I process my plasma. So just hang that up. And then um, what we're going to do is put our empty bag on the scale. And we want to zero that out because I want to know exactly how much product I have in the bag, not how much the bag and the product weighs. Okay, so now that I have a zero, what I can do is just um, pop open my glass stopper here, just snap it both ways, and then gently release my extractor, my plasma extractor. And then you can see the plasma flows into here pretty easily and quickly. And then I have a hand clamp here ready to stop the plasma from flowing as soon as I have enough in there. And I'm going to wait until it gets to about right here, we'll leave about 10% uh, of plasma or so. Okay, so I'm going to clamp it and then bring my extractor down to release the pressure. And then what I'm going to do is separate my plasma from the rest of the bag so you don't have to worry about um, this clamp releasing and plasma going back in. Um, so I'm just going to put it in our heat sealer here. If you like to cross match your plasma to your recipient, you can make aliquots, which I will show you how we do with the red blood cells. Um, we don't really cross match our plasma often, so it's okay to just disconnect that. And then we'll weigh it and see how much plasma we have exactly. Okay, so we have 235 grams, which we equate to about 235 mils. I'll put the donor's name there. And then now our red blood cells are ready for the additive. So what I like to do um, is take it down from the extractor and kind of um, invert it a little bit to get, you can see that the, there's a higher concentration of red blood cells down here. I'm just going to kind of mix that up. 
And then I'm going to release, this also has a glass stopper, so we're just going to snap that. And then that will allow the um, Optizol to flow right into the bag. You can see it flowing. And then I'll also give it a few mixes while it's in there. This is a good time to check for clots in your sample. You don't want to see any clots. That would be a reason to discard the whole sample, unfortunately. I'm just inverting this until my Optizol is done being added, which it looks like it just about is. And I don't have any more flowing in here. So at this point, what I like to do is um, put my clamp down here close to the bag. Um, so that I can just sort of mix it and inspect it one more time. Make sure that there's no clots in here. Everything is well mixed. And it's this nice red color. <clears throat> and then what I'll do is I'll kind of hold it up for gravity to allow the red blood cells to flow back. And then once we got a good amount in our line, I'm going to clamp it. And so what I'm going to do is make some aliquots with the remaining line here. Um, and those can be used for cross-matching against your recipient later. So um, again, we just use the heat sealer. And I'll start by um, sealing it right at this junction here. And then that can be pulled apart. And then I will just make a few aliquots about an inch and a half long or so along this line. Okay, now we have our sample here with our aliquots ready to go, and I'm going to weigh this to see how much blood I have in here. Um, remember that this, this quantity is going to be my red blood cells plus my additive, and this has 100 mils of um, additive. So our true sample was 254 mils of blood plus 100 mils of additive, which gives us 354 mils. So now we are ready to store our products. Um, our blood will be stored in our blood fridge. It'll be good for 35 days because it's got that additive in there. And then our plasma will go in our um, plasma freezer. It will be good as fresh frozen plasma for one year and then frozen plasma for four more years after that. So a total of five years.